Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look on how to install and set up Raspbian Lite. So first we got to go to raspberrypi.org, which is this web page right here. Go to the downloads ta uh, tab up here. Go to Raspbian. And here you'll see the three versions that we have. Look for the Lite and download. You can download it as a torrent if you have one of those or as zip. I'm just going to do zip because it's quicker and easier. Once it's installed on your computer, open the zip and extract the IMG that is inside, which is this one. So now before we can take this and put it onto our micro SD card, we will need to empty our micro SD card. You can use whatever program you want. If you have a Windows computer, a free version comes already installed on your computer. Just search for Disk Manager, which is this program right here. Select the disk that you would like to work with. This is my micro SD card. You can see here that it's got a few partitions. This is the main boot, which is boot F. Let's just erase the volume and erase any other partition it may have. And now let's create a simple volume. Just click accept. Every sh everything should be by default and it should work all right. And now we're going to need a program to actually flash this IMG onto our micro SD card. So you can use whatever program you want. I'm going to be using Ether by Balena which is a free software you can download. Uh, you have the link to this down in the description. It, uh, it's available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So it's this program right here. You gotta select the image from where you saved it to. It should automatically select your micro SD card. If it doesn't, or isn't the one that you want, you can always go to change and change which one you want to do. Now give it some time for it to flash. All right, once flashed and validated, a new storage unit should appear on your computer. This is it. This is all the, the programs that are going to be in it. So if you're using it, for example, on a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is my case, where we don't have an Ethernet port, and if I don't want to use uh, a monitor to connect to the Wi-Fi, I can just connect via SSH. So to do that, let's create a new file. Call it SSH, all lowercase with no extension. Now let's create a new document called WPA underscore supplicant.conf. Now open it up in Notepad and paste it this code that is also, everything is down in the description. Now instead of country uh, US, you can put your own. Here you'll want to have to put the name of the network, of the Wi-Fi network you, you want to connect to. And here you're going to have to put the password to connect to that Wi-Fi. Now save. And now you're ready to go. Now you can take the micro, micro SD card slot away from your computer. Plug it into your Raspberry Pi, and you'll be able to connect via SSH. If you do want to connect via SSH, I do want to recommend Putty, which is a Windows free software, which you can download also in the description down below. So this is Putty. I'm going to put the internal IP of my Raspberry Pi on my local network. If you don't know what IP devices connected to your network have, I recommend a free app for iOS and Android called Fink. You will also find a link to it in the description. So now we'll try to open that. The default logging is P, and the password is Raspberry. Once connected, we, we, have, we have control of the terminal, and now we are ready to go. Since the default uh, password is very obvious, if you want to change your password, you can type in pass WD. You have to type Raspberry, and now select the new password you want to give your Raspberry Pi. We type it, and the password should update. As a bonus, if you want to set up a static IP, paste this into your terminal. You'll see this file, and here you can paste this in, which is to set up the static IP on the Wi-Fi. If you want to use it on the, if you're using it via Ethernet, just change Wallen to Ethernet. Click dot, uh, Control X. Yes, to save changes, press Enter, and you'll be ready to go. As a final little tip, if you want some extra settings, which I won't really go over, you can always type sudo raspberry forward slash config, which should bring up this menu, which you can browse around and change and have a look for yourself. You can also look up more documentation up online. But this is as far as I'm going to go today in this video. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.